Hello everybody. Um, isn't this strange? I'm going to read you a story. I hope you're all doing well. Uh, I had a long think about what to read you. This is an old book of mine from when I was a little girl. Uh, you can see that it's really, really old, mainly because it's uh, stuck down with sticky tape because I read it so much. But also, if you look very carefully, when I was little, I spent so much time looking at it that I coloured in the face of the cow and something on its side and I did some scribbling in the book and I remember my mum was so cross with me uh, and told me off that I was really upset and then she um, stuck tacky back over it to try and protect it so it's why it's still here. Um, uh, it's called The Cow Who Fell in the Canal and it was one of my favourite books and the funny thing is it's set in Holland and when I grew up I met and married a Dutch person who lives in Holland and my children are Dutch and so I was very excited because I thought I would be able to read them this story and I used to read it to them when they were little and they also really loved it. Uh, when I opened the book you can see there was my writing when I was a little girl. Look, I didn't join up. Oh, terrible but they didn't teach me how to join up in my school so uh, I've learned how to do that since and now I can join up a bit better. So I'm going to read you the cow who fell in the canal and there she is going splosh into the water. I hope you can see the pictures a little bit. I'll try and hold it still for you. Hendrika was an unhappy cow. She lived on a farm in Holland where it is very flat. All summer long she ate grass, all winter long she ate hay, all winter and all summer she did nothing but eat. Why do you think she's sad? I think she might be a bit bored and lonely just eating all day. There she is in her stable. Is it a barn? Maybe not a stable, I don't know. And she gave milk to Mr Hofstra, the farmer. Mr Hofstra thought she was a fine cow because she gave such white creamy milk. Eat, eat, Hendrika, he would say. The more you eat, the more creamy white milk you can give me. Hendrika loved Mr Hofstra, so she ate more to please him. But she was unhappy. There they are and there you can see the milk churns in the boat where her milk goes. In front of the pasture was a road. The pasture is a kind of field where the animals lived. And in front of that pasture is the road. And there's the road that goes past the farm. Every day, Peter the horse came with a wagon to take Hendrika's milk to the city. Peter told Hendrika about the city. The streets are made of cobblestones and the houses have staircases on their roofs. People ride bicycles, he said. Hendrika wanted to see the wonderful things Peter talked about. She was tired of looking at Mr Hofstra's house, the barn and the windmill. The windmill wore a little porch. It went round and round in the wind. It made Hendrika dizzy. There's the windmill. This is a windmill that's not for grinding corn. It's for draining the fields because in Holland, if you see, it's very, very flat and the land is very low. So there's lots of water and it's, it might flood. So the, uh, the windmill will drain the water into these canals so that the fields aren't too wet. Behind the pasture, there was a narrow canal. In the summertime, a man came through the canal with a boat to take Mr Hofstra's cheese to market. Hendrika liked the boats. She thought it would be nice to ride in a boat to market. Peter said the cheese sellers wore coloured straw hats with ribbons. Hendrika thought a coloured hat would taste so good. Poor unhappy Hendrika. She longed to see something besides the house, the barn and the windmill. Instead, she ate and ate and ate and she grew fat and then fatter and then very, very, very fat. Here you can see her. She's been doing all that eating and she's so fat, her tummy is almost reaching the ground. She grew so fat, she could hardly move. She grew so fat, she could hardly see. One day, 
She went farther and farther along the pasture. She looked neither right nor left, for she had eyes only for the sweet grass. And before she knew it, splosh, she fell in the canal. There she goes. The canal was not deep, but it was deep enough for Hendrika to get all wet. She was too fat to climb out, so she just stood in the water and ate the grass along the bank. Mr Hofstra didn't know that Hendrika was in the canal because he was busy getting his cheese ready for market. Hendrika was in the canal a long time. She ate so much grass that she became sleepy, but she couldn't sleep in the water. If only she could get back to the pasture. It was springtime and there were flowers to eat. She walked and walked along the edge of the canal, eating grass. When suddenly, look what she's found. Can you see it? Floating along the canal. She came upon an old raft. She pushed and pushed and finally she fell on the raft and it drifted away from the bank. Hendrika went floating down the canal. Oops, I don't know if you can see that. There she goes, floating off down the canal. Past the pasture went Hendrika, past the barn, the house and the windmill, past the tulips, past the neighbour's barn, house and windmill, past more tulips, past another barn, another house, another windmill, still more tulips and still another windmill. Now Hendrika wasn't too sleepy to open her eyes. There was so much to see on both sides of the canal. There she goes. And you know what? It really does look like that in the Dutch countryside. And if you look carefully, this person here is wearing wooden shoes called clogs. And when my children were little, their grandparents gave them clogs. They're called klompen. And Dutch children still do wear them in the countryside. They look very funny, but they still wear them because they're good if you go out in the mud. So they wear them instead of wearing wellies. A whole row of houses with staircase roofs passed by. Then some children on bicycles. Look at the cow on the canal, they cried, and followed after on the road above the canal. Another row of staircase roofs passed by. Housewives were cleaning windows and scrubbing doorsteps. They laughed to see Hendrika floating along. They too followed along the banks, laughing and exclaiming. Look, she's arrived in the town, no longer in the countryside. Soon a whole flock of people were running, walking or riding along the bank, following the raft in the canal. Hendrika loved all the attention she was getting. She mooed with happiness. There they are, getting busier and busier as they go. And you can see all the Dutch rooftops along there. That's very, very typical Dutch houses. And the bridge that tips up to let the boats go through. Suddenly the raft stopped and two boys pulled Hendrika to shore with a rope. Hendrika broke away and ran down the street. It was hard to run on the cobblestones, but Hendrika was enjoying the city at last. There she is. If you look very carefully at these top windows here and there, the people who live above the shops have got a little mirror poking out of their windows so they can see who's ringing on their doorbell or going into their shop and they don't need to, to look, lean out the window, they can just look through the mirror. And people in Holland still have that. I always think it's very clever that they can see who's downstairs just by looking through the mirror in their windows. On and on through the streets she went with all the people following her. Look, they're all chasing after her down the streets. She looked into windows and pranced into yards. She sniffed the bicycles. There was so much to see. I love these pictures. And here, right down in this corner, there is a man eating a raw fish. It's a herring. And Dutch people like to eat raw herring and they hang them up in the air like that and tip their heads back and swallow the herrings. 
um, and it's really tasty. It's a bit like Dutch sushi. Just as Hendrika began to get a little tired, she arrived at a big square. Here were whole crowds of people. Here were men wearing coloured straw hats with streamers. Here were balls oh, of cheeses piled high. So this is the market that Peter the horse told her all about. If you look, it's really colourful and you can see the men in their coloured straw hats. The market was just as Peter told her it would be and the green straw hat tasted just as good as she thought it would. There she is. She's stolen someone's hat and is having a good old chomp there. Look, they're weighing the cheese with the big weights to see how heavy they are so they can sell them. Mr Hofstra was there selling his cheeses too. Hendrika, he cried when he saw her. I thought you were at home in the pasture eating grass, not here eating hats. A hat is to wear. He was so surprised. Everyone laughed at his bewilderment. You see his clogs. There's his wooden shoes. Mr Hofstra pushed Hendrika into Peter's wagon and drove her home. Oh dear, look, there's naughty Judith when she was a little girl colouring in Peter the horse. Oh dear, oh dear. I've learned not to do that now. You'll be pleased to know. After that day, Mr Hofstra made certain that Hendrika was safe in the pasture. Hendrika didn't mind. Now she had so much to think about as she chewed the grass, looking so pretty, in a coloured straw hat with streamers. So she doesn't get bored or lonely anymore because she can think about her trip to the city. And there she is, heading off to the barn at night. I hope you enjoyed the cow who fell in the canal. Maybe you'd like to draw a picture of Hendrika having her adventures in the Dutch city. Or maybe you could imagine what would happen if she went on her raft over the sea to England and came to England. She might sail up the Thames. What would happen if she arrived in the middle of London? I'd love to see some of your pictures. I'm really missing you all. I hope you're doing well and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you soon. Bye bye.